So you have been compared to Harriet Tubman by Michelle Alexander. Um, can you actually talk to us a little bit about uh, who you are and the work that you've done in order to get those types of accolades? Yeah, I was, uh, I must say I was just honored, honored to be referred to as that type of committed person, Harriet Tubman by Michelle Alexander. Who I am as the founding uh, director of a New Way of Life Reentry Project, uh, a woman that's committed to uh, free and support women who are trapped in the criminal justice system. Uh, I'm the um, a mother, uh, activist. Um, uh, I'm a woman. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your personal history and what I've heard you uh, classify several times as, uh, as the life? Yes. Um, so I was born in a housing project in East L.A. called Aliso Village in the early 50s. And in that housing project, there I have five brothers, and I remember my mother would, this was a really happy time. Uh, my mother would walk us across the first street bridge, and we'd go to Clifton's cafeteria where there's a wide array of food, and we'd all be all happy. And then there was the other weekends where um, my mother would drive my auntie to Camarilla State Hospital. And at Camarilla State Hospital, my auntie's boyfriend lived and he would come out on weekend passes or passes. And as we drove to Camarilla Hospital, I was a four or five years old little girl and I'd be in the back seat and I, I'd try to evaporate into that back seat because as we got to Palm Tree number 22, we'd arrive at the hospital where he'd walk out of. And I would count the palm trees, trying to just fade into the upholstery. Never faded, he'd walk out every time and sit next to me in that back seat of that car. And I knew while he was uh, on his past that he was gonna harm me. He was gonna do things to me that I couldn't describe as a little girl but I knew they were wrong. One day my auntie walked in and caught him and she blamed me for what was happening and swore me to secrecy. I remember her calling me a dirty, nasty little girl and I held that and that wasn't the only experience there were multiple experiences, and I learned how to navigate um, those experiences, trading and hiding and, 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 and getting through, up until the time that my son, who was five, was killed. And at that time, my body just could hold no more trauma, no more pain, no more hurt, no more grief, and I began to drink alcoholically. And that escalated to drug use. And I was criminalized for the drug use. I was uh, sent to prison and over and over and over again until one day I found a place down the street here on Pico on Pico and 10th, and that uh, provided me the opportunity to begin the journey of healing, uh, to learn how to be sober, to uh, find my voice, to find my purpose, to learn to forgive, to learn to stand up, and to learn to be all that I could be. So let's explore that a little bit. So um, you're from South Los Angeles. Yes. Um, but you ended up getting the support and treatment that you needed here in Santa Monica or a feminist TED Talk. Uh, can you actually talk a little bit about the disparate resources that are uh, not available uh, right. in communities uh, that you come from and yes. the uh, types of affluence and resources that are available in a community like Santa Monica? Yeah, so I, w I just want to, just to give you a, a hint of an idea 
Um, I got off the bus from prison six times, downtown Skid Row being released from prison. No ID, no social security card, no nothing to help me support to come back into the community. And I would return to South LA. Nothing was available there that could help me to rebuild my lives, to, be, to rebuild my life. Uh, there might have been some places I could go to, but those places treated me if I was a mistake. And I wasn't a mistake. There had been many mistakes made by other people on my body, on my potential, on my, on my uh, humanity, but I was not a mistake. When I arrived in Santa Monica, I wasn't treated like I was a mistake. I was afforded some of the things that I needed, or can I say all the things that I needed very early on. There was this buffet of services that I, I was able to access, you know, therapy weekly. Um, I was introduced to the 12-step program. I, I went to dental services, medical services. I went to art shows. I was invited to people's houses. I was, I was welcomed as a, as, a, as, a, as a woman, as mm -hmm. a human being, mm -hmm. and uh, I was supported. And those things made me stronger. So let's also talk about the disparate uh, treatment you saw as it relates to sentencing for those who committed similar offenses to the crimes that you committed yeah. but were uh, kind of shepherded into a different criminal justice system. Yeah. So one of the other things that I noticed while I was in Santa Monica is that for the crime of, that I was committed to prison for, people were referred to treatment. They were re given diversion programs. Uh, they were given court cards. They were given community service. They were given uh, uh, different, different um, they, weren't, they weren't chained up and, and, and sent to prison. Uh, they weren't punished. Um, uh, they were resourced. And I remember one, sh one day striking there was this young guy, and he was talking about how he hated the color green. And as he went on to talk, um, he had been sentenced to community service. He had been sentenced to community service for the crime of possession and having an accident and, and doing some, some, you know, tearing up some stuff. He got to paint the jail green, and he hated the color green. As, as he's talking, I'm thinking, I had to live in the jail. So that was his punishment. He, 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 he painted yeah. the jail green. He painted the jail you green. You had to spend time in jail. And, and I lived in the, and I, and I had to live in the jail. I had to live in that green. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the road to redemption then? Um, what specifically uh, was the kind of aha moment for you where you realized you wanted to uh, start your own organization and start doing some work? Yeah. So when I saw that there was a different solution that, that, there was another way to address the, 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 the many harms of addiction. Um, and it was much more effective, cost effective. It was much more humane. Uh, it was much more kind, much more loving, much more thoughtful. And I said, if I could build something like this in South LA for women who are getting off that bus downtown Skid Row with nowhere to go, then perhaps I could alleviate some pain and suffering um, that they would have to endure as, because, they, because they're not resourced. You know, we spend $75,000 a year to incarcerate someone either mental, with a mental health problem or an addiction problem, and, and, when, we, and when we send them back, um, they're probably worse off than when they left. The organization, A New Way of Life, it takes $18,000 a year. And when women live there, they're able to stand up, they're able to, they're doing everything, you know, that, um, 
I guess they dream of doing. So let's actually talk about those collateral consequences yeah. in terms of the uh, barriers uh, that exist for someone who is uh, returning home from being uh, incarcerated. Yeah. What are some of the things that uh, even after uh, coming out of the criminal justice system uh, that still are barriers for folks to essentially help to uh, re reintegrate? Housing, jobs, uh, getting your child back. Um, I just applied last, um, I just got back from Paris the 4th of last month, and I applied for global entry. And when I was coming back, I was going to do the global entry as I was coming back into the country. So I went to the desk, and they told me I was denied. I was denied because I have a criminal history. Um, all of my crimes are nonviolent. I haven't been in prison in 25 years. And um, I can't get global entry. Uh, it's a um, privilege for other folks, but because I'm denied global entry. So there are so many. I see women fighting to get their child back. And because they went to prison doesn't say they're a bad mom. Or, um, it, but, but because they went to prison, they can't get their, their, their kids have been taken. And I see many times the court has the authority to say yes or no. And I see women do everything that's asked by the court, and they still lose their child. Uh, sometimes, or not all the time do they lose their child, but that's another thing. So there are 48,000 uh, collateral consequences in this country to a per for a person with a criminal, with a felony conviction, with a criminal history. So with those 48,000 uh, obstacles that um, individuals with criminal histories have to face once they come home, if you were to um, prioritize um, top two or three things that uh, still are immediate needs that need to be uh, reformed in this uh, era of criminal justice reform and uh, movement building, what would you highlight as some things that are kind of near-term wins that uh, we can actually try to uh, engage in, 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 in shifting the needle. Well, Derek, you took care of one with the Fair Ch Chance Ordinance. So that was the ability to not have to a answer the question on initial application at the county level. But I think job is, is, is the most important. Housing is second import important, or, or maybe even first. You, you can't say which one is most important to a person. It all depends on where they're at right. in the redevelopment of their lives. Right. Um, uh, family reunification is definitely imp important to women. Uh, we want our babies. We want to, um, we want to um, have conversations with the sons and, and, the, and the daughters, and, and we want to love our children, and we want to bring our children up, and we want them to know us and know how much we love them. Mm -hmm. But the way the system set up the separation is just horrendous. Yeah. The theme of today is redefining the future. Yes. Um, I'd like to actually have you talk specifically about uh, some of the work you've done with A New Way of Life and uh, the impacts that you've made yeah. on formerly incarcerated women here locally. Yeah. Coming here to Santa Monica and getting a, just a, a, a window of opportunity changed the whole trajectory of my life. And I want to provide that, that opportunity to other women just like me that just don't get an opportunity. People talk about first chances and second chances, and, I'm, and, and uh, people should talk about second chances, but me, for many of us, it's the first chance. Uh, and so I want to provide those opportunities for first chances to make women, uh, women's, uh, women's lives stronger, allow them a place to heal, and that's what we do at A New Way of Life. But it's not just, uh, uh, this isn't just an L.A. problem. It's not just a California problem. This is a national problem, and women are the fastest growing segment to the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. So I've seen what six months of, of support, stability, uh, inspiration, motivation can do. Uh, I've seen women just, just thrive just because they had a place to land. Um, so, Derek, I want to you know, go on to inspire and create an um, uh, institute that trains women or trains people across the nation, how to put up this, these little houses. A uh, new way of life consists of seven uh, single family homes 
across LA County, uh, out into Long Beach, that provides a home-like environment for people to land, to stand up, to uh, learn how to live life uh, on life's term and with opportunity. You know, so I just want to see the, see our our communities thrive. So that's uh, the um, work that you want New Way of Life to uh, kind of pursue and 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 expand on. What about Susan Burton? What's the what's the next step for Susan Burton? So um, so Susan Burton wants to build these this safe house network um, and train train up up and coming leaders. Um, to go on and put in time, put in work, uh, put in love, and put in support within these communities and, and lead. Well, I'm, I'm better for knowing you, and uh, you know, I just uh, think the world of you, so continue to like actually keep doing the good work, and uh, you. you know that you have an advocate and supporter in me. Thank you. Thank you for your time right. today. Yes. Thank you.